in school, when we had group projects, we sometimes had the luxury of choosing our teammates. And while that may not have always been the case, there were moments when we had the power to decide who we'd work with. Now, as an adult, that's more of a rarity. And as it turns out, sometimes we're even required to work with difficult people. And since we're being professional, we don't have much of a choice but to make it work. So today I'm sharing techniques that you can use for when you are dealing with difficult people at work. Let's get right into it. Great, so the first strategy is to find your cool. Being calm will ensure that you're in control of your emotions and you're less likely to be reactive and more likely to be responsive. So we don't wanna react in communication, we wanna respond. And that way you're really in charge of how you communicate, both verbally and non-verbally. It'll also make you clear-headed that you can make decisions on the fly. So to the other person, you're gonna also appear centered and calm and collected. And so for these reasons, you'll also end up exuding confidence and respectability. Finding your cool is not always easy. And I think we know that from experience. It requires you to be in the proper headspace. So maybe taking 10 minutes to do some breath work or some meditation, or just letting your mind shut off for a couple minutes, even a few seconds, will help you get into that calmer state. And this will set you up for success because you're feeling calm enough to do so. And then when you interact with the person, try to be as succinct as possible by only saying what you need to say. Don't go into long-winded ways of expressing yourself. Then you should also keep in mind your tone. So use lower tones to exert your authority and your credibility. And the last thing I want you to think about is asserting yourself by using the power of low inflection. So we don't want to have up talk. We don't want to have our rising inflection at the end of our utterance. Instead, we want to focus on lowering the pitch. And that's how we find our power tone as well. All right, the second strategy is to change focus. Think of it also as switching gears. So you've probably heard of the expression, it's no use crying over spilt milk, right? What's done is done. The milk spilled and, you know, it's too bad, but don't cry over it because once something happens, it happens. And unless we had the power to rewind time and prevent the milk from spilling, then it's really no use and wasting our energy and thinking about, ugh, coulda, woulda, shoulda, right? So by taking this approach towards dealing with difficult people and any problems they might have caused will initiate problem-solving mode. And that's what we want. We want to approach people that are difficult, issues that might arise because of it, and any other sort of icky situation, especially in professional settings, with this mindset of what can I do to solve this problem? How can I resolve this icky situation? So by putting on our problem-solving mode cap, so to speak, we're allowing ourselves to think about things more creatively. So now that we're calm, we can think of things in a more creative, action-packed, problem-solving way. So what I want you to do here is to figure out what are the actionable steps? What steps can I actually implement so that I can remedy this situation? And it might not just be you involved. So come together with the people who are involved in this situation and think about it in the sense of what is the best solution to this outcome? What can we do here to fix the problem as best we can? And then the third one here is building respect and creating rapport. So think of it as the two R's, respect and rapport. When you focus on treating people respectfully, it sends the message that that's how you want to be treated as well. Do unto others, right? Sometimes people need the reminder and it's a gentle sort of shove in the right direction, 
in a way that's how you can think of it. So showing respect can help the other person be mindful of that and be respectful towards you as well, finding it within themselves to treat you that way. And alongside respect is rapport. We talk a lot about building rapport in communication when we want to establish that common ground and really hit the ground running with that kind of interaction. And this is true for personal interactions and the more professional interactions, but it is social interaction and it is something that we need to be aware of because rapport is an amazing thing. It creates trust and it starts to create this sense of closeness with another person. And so when someone feels close to someone else, they're less likely to be difficult. They're more likely to be problem solving and trying to find a harmonious balance and trying to find a way of not rocking boats just for the sake of rocking boats. And so it really is understated how important building rapport is. So really keep in mind respect and rapport because they're two sides of the same coin. All right, now you might be thinking, well, what if I tried these and there still seems to be a fundamental disconnect between you and the deemed difficult person? Well, then you might try to speak to them about the situation more directly in terms of the issues that you've been experiencing. Try not to make it focused on you, you, you. Try not to use that pronoun. Instead, try to make it more, this is the situation. This is a direct result of certain types of behavior instead of pointing fingers because that will not make it the best for coming to a resolution and steps that can be taken going forward. Because nobody likes to feel like they're being blamed for something, even if that might be the case. We want to be careful with how we frame it with our communication. But instead, if you explain how something that they have done is having a tremendous negative impact on the team, on deliverables, on company morale, on work culture, on productivity, et cetera, that might be the key to transforming this difficult person because they now understand that there are ramifications to what they've been doing in terms of their actions and their behavior and their communication. So really positioning it as this is the outcome thus far, how can we transform it? How can we reframe this? It becomes a conversation. Now, granted, not every difficult person is going to be able to have this kind of conversation with you, let's say, but it's worth the try and really trying to make it collaborative, trying to be collaborative and cooperative because that ultimately is what's going to create the most success for teams and for companies at large. Okay. Let's say now that you try these three steps as well as talking to the person individually about specific issues with communication, behavior, attitude, and so forth, but these strategies still don't seem to be working for your specific situation, given the communication participants as well, then there are two more options that you can lean on. You can remove yourself from the context, meaning you physically remove yourself from the same space as they. So if you are in the break room and they're there, you can remove yourself. You can walk away. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to be antagonistic or be passive aggressive in any way. I encourage you not to, but you can remove yourself from the situation. You can also limit interactions that you have with this person. Let's say you are on the same team as they. Keep it professional, keep it short, keep it succinct, and just limit your interactions with them. In other words, you're essentially ignoring them for better lack of a word. So do it in a kind way, do it gently, but you don't have to interact with them if if things are not working, especially after having spoken to them. And if they're still not making any efforts to change the problem behavior, the problem communication. And okay, let's say ignoring them still doesn't seem to cut it. And in some cases it might. Then you might need to escalate. You might need to take the matter to some higher authority figure. 
By that point, you've also probably already gotten some perspective from others in the way of managers, colleagues, maybe even friends. And you know that this is not a one-off. So bring this in front of people who could allow a different perspective and an alternate angle with the situation, right? What's their read? What's their take on how you should proceed? So in some situations, not all, but in some, the only option left is to escalate it to your supervisor or manager. And this should only be used as a last resort. So tread with caution. The best case scenario would be that you do the steps one through three, and then you follow that up by talking to them privately, having a conversation, the two of you, candidly about the real ramifications of their actions and their behavior. But again, depending on the situation, depending on the communication participants and this specific difficult person, it may or may not go that well. So keep in mind that every difficult situation will be unique, right? And unfortunately, there is no magic formula when dealing with difficult people at work. If there were, I would make a nice lesson and give it to you. But there are still things that we can do, such as employing these three strategies, keep them in mind, and try your best. The more rapport you have with someone, the better communication outcomes you will have. And that is a fact. So focus more on building the rapport, garnering respect, and you will see a complete 180 in your social interactions, both personal and in this case, professional. All right, Explorers, that's it for me today. If you like this lesson, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you prefer to listen to this lesson, then be sure to check out our podcast. And you can find that over at exploring.co forward slash blog, where you'll also find the full transcript of this lesson. And if you'd like to help our channel continue to grow, then feel free to share this lesson and our channel and our podcast with anyone who wants to improve their communication and public speaking skills. All right. I will see you in the next lesson. Bye for now and happy exploring. Mm -hmm.